So graphing in three dimensions today, your 3D glasses will not be a benefit yet. What? Okay, well, this isn't three dimensions yet, so you gotta wait until we graph in 3D and then you have to let me know if they're working for you. Okay? Yes, you'll, you'll have to share with the people around you, I guess, if you didn't bring your own. All right. No, no one around me has any, so. That they're not ready yet. So, to begin okay. with, I would um, get the learning goal down there. We're going to define what a trace and an intercept is. We'll do that as a class. We'll talk about coordinate space, graph, uh, uh, what the graph of a plane is, and some. we'll go through some examples on your assignment here. Okay. Um, anyway, so I'll let you get that started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention up here, you're going to be use, you're going to be taking notes in, on your note page as well as uh, working through problems on your assignment. So let me kind of let me kind of explain how your assignment is laid out as we're going through four four here. Okay, your assignment here. You'll notice this grid that's on here. It's using isometric dot paper. Your textbook does not show it like this. They actually uh, uh, turn the graph in a different in a different way. So if you look in the textbook, it's going to be a bit different. I prefer I prefer using it like this. It's a little easier for students to see. Uh, you'll notice the back. We've replaced that as well. And then we've given you a piece of paper with a bunch of dots on it and problem numbers by it. That dot is your origin. So we'll start we'll start talking about what we're going to draw there. You'll notice five through twelve will be on the same coordinate space. Okay? And then when you turn to the next page, you have your 24 through 31. And then you just have a blank page with dots where you can put problem numbers by it front and back. Okay? That being said, there's a lot of things that we need to go through and understand. We're going to kind of work through it um, as we do some problems. So if you want you can use the note page that I gave you on the way that you picked up on the way in just to kind of make general notes to yourself and then you can work through the problems like one through four you could actually um, you can put it on your note page or you can just reference your worksheet however it's going to be most beneficial for you to take notes but it's not a tough concept today I don't think um, once you get the hang of it it's just a different concept which makes it difficult when you pile it in with a bunch of other difficult things. All right, so I don't know if the 3D glasses work here. Are they helping? Tyler, are they helping out? Kind of, yeah, kind of. It, it's not pure 3D. It's not HD 3D, so it might. It, it actually might not work at all, but it looks pretty cool. You guys wearing glasses. Yeah. All right, so, so graphing in three dimensions. So first of all, state the coordinates of each point in the diagram. I want you to try number one together, see if you can come up with an idea there. Hands up, can I have your attention back up here? Thank you. So there's a few things that may not be as clear on this sheet for you. This is your x-axis. Okay, now that's a little different because usually we think of this over here as our x. This is our y-axis. And this is our z-axis. Okay, so x, y, z, this is the positive end of the x. This is the negative end of the x. Now notice, we've shown the negative end using dashed lines. Okay, and the positive end of the y-axis, and the negative end of the y-axis. And then we have the positive end of the z-axis, and the negative end of the z-axis. So the dashed parts we've made the negatives on. Okay, if I'm looking at point A, point A, point A sits right there. Okay, and there's a vector, it's a little tougher to see, but there's a vector coming from the origin out to point A. So what you need to ask yourself first when you're plotting points and thinking of points, when you're dealing with coordinate space versus a coordinate plane, a coordinate plane is just a flat plane surface if you think back to geometry. Okay. What we did in geometry mostly was just dealing with plane surfaces versus coordinate space you're dealing with three-dimensional surfaces which you like since you're a three-dimensional person. Okay? You, you live in this world where you want 3D objects whether it be a hat or uh, a car or anything like that. You 
you would design that in a three-dimensional coordinate space. So it's called coordinate space versus coordinate plane. Space is the space around us. It's three-dimensional versus a coordinate plane, which is two-dimensional. Three-dimensional, we have three axes. Two-dimensional, we have the two axes. That's really simplifying it all there. Okay, so we have an X, Y, and Z. So point A on the X axis is at, well, if we're here and we move this way, we're at 1. Now, did we go parallel to the Y axis? So did we move this direction at all? No. no. Did we move up or down at all? No. So since we didn't move with the Y axis, that would be 0. And we didn't move up or down, it would be 0. So that's a coordinate triple, okay, an ordered triple. 1, 0, 0. So it's very similar to x, y, but this is x, y, z. Okay? All right, why don't you go ahead and complete 2, 3, and 4 right now. All Potter, you get out here. Letter B. Letter B is right in the middle. Okay, we're done talking. 0, 0, 0. Letter C. Um, we don't go anywhere parallel to the x axis, and we go to C. Um, so that's 0 for x. On the y, we move 2. And on the z, we don't go up or down, so that's 0. And then on the d, for the d there, we go on the, towards the x. We don't go any way this direction. Okay, we're going to d. We don't go any way this direction. We do go up and down, though. So we have 0 for x, 0 for y, and z, we go up. One, two, three. Okay. Any questions on those? Yes, Lily. We're going to see that. Yeah, for sure. We will see that here in a few. Any other questions? Okay, moving on. Let's take a look at problems five through niner on the examples. For those of you wanting to know your assignment, as of right now, it's right here. You can copy it down later, but you'll notice one through 15, we're working through most of those right now. Yeah. Okay? So, don't worry about copying that down right now. Let's just go ahead and try five through nine. Five through nine says graph each point in a coordinate space. Now, if you're looking at your assignment, you'll notice in the in the packet I gave you, there's a place to do problems 5 through 12, all of them on the same coordinate space. Which means, in order for you to do this accurately, you need to actually create a coordinate space. Okay? So I would suggest using a ruler, or not a ruler, but a pencil as you start. You don't necessarily have to use a ruler. Um, if you have one, a straight edge, maybe the edge of your calculator would be helpful. But as I do this, I'm going to draw a straight vertical line down through my origin and then I'm going to dash it at the bottom just because I'm showing the negative portion there. All right. So that is my z axis. So z is positive up here, down here it's negative. I am going to go this direction with my dots and this is my oops this is my y axis here okay so my y axis y is positive here and I should have attached the negative part in here Try to hit the points. I'm kind of at a weird angle trying to stay under this camera, but there's our negative portion. And then we have our, our x-axis. And our x-axis goes out this direction. Okay, and then dash it back here. Negative and positively for x. Okay, now a lot of times 
if you're doing computer programming or you're doing this on a computer, you won't see the negative portion. You'll just see this solid line piece, this corner, kind of. So if you use computer programs and you've dealt with three-dimensional graphing in them, a lot of times you just see this solid piece. Okay, And there's different ways that they represent those values. So as I'm graphing these, are we ready to roll on them? Okay, so number five, if I'm graphing them, that's x, that's y, that's z. I want everyone to put a point on that grid where you think number five is and where you think number seven is. Just label it, five, label the point five, label the point seven, and then try number nine. Don't worry about 11 yet. Okay, just label those points five, seven, nine. Number five, I'm going three on the X, so I start at the origin, one, two, three. I don't go anywhere on the Y, and I don't go anywhere on the Z, so I just put my point there. That is number five. How many got that one? Okay. Number six, don't go anywhere on X, don't go anywhere on Y, but I go up four on Z. Okay, looks like right there. Here is number number seven. Thank you. Any questions on that one? How many got that one? Okay, the different ones become now when you go like this. So I'm going to use vectors to help myself out here. I'm going to go three on X. So I'm going one, two, three. I went that far. And now I went, I go down 2 on y, or negative 2 on y. Well, y is running this way. So negative is from this point. I'm going backwards 2, so which means I'm going to move my, my label for 5. I'll move it down there. So I'm going to go back 2, 1, 2. So I went that way. See that vector? Went that way 2. And now I'm going down 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is my point. That is number nine. Okay, and you can kind of see my path. X, Y, Z. Okay. You can almost kind of see the the um, the three dimensionality of it. If you if I were to dash this as I went down through here, it even makes it a little easier to kind of see what's going on. But this is this is what we have. Now some of you will go, well isn't that the same thing as like going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 2, 0? Like, couldn't I go 7, 2, and then not go up? Wouldn't I get at the same point? Well it would appear that you're at the same point from our vantage point, but if we were actually able to take this out and hold this three dimensional space and see all the little points in there, it just so happens that that point overlaps with this point. Okay? The way the way we're from our vantage right now. Okay? How many got that one right? Okay. Any questions on it? Why don't you guys try number 11 just to make sure you've got it. I don't think there's enough space for number 11. Don't think so? Give it a shot. 1 2 3 4 5 Try it out. Yes. Oh, good question. Um, I think it's helpful at the beginning, but you don't have to. No. If you can see it well, that's fine. Okay, let's check it. Um, oh, or not? Excuse me. Jenna had a good question. She was asking, "Hey, do I have to uh, draw the lines? Do you have to draw the vectors? You don't have to. It's just sometimes helpful when you're beginning." Okay. So three on x. So once again, we're going this way three negative one on y this time so I'm going back one and then six on z so I'm going up six man it just barely fits number eleven you have to draw the lines don't have to draw the lines if it helps you then draw them. Okay. alright 
Yep, you'll you have you enough. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. No, not like on other problems. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Pretty sure. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next piece here. You'll notice you still have to do 6 through 12 on that part. In fact, if it makes you feel better, I'll give you guys two minutes to work on 6 through 12 right now. Hey, if I can have your attention up here, once again, the danger of me giving you the assignment right now is that you'll just keep working on trying to do the other steps. The kind of saving grace right now is you don't know necessarily how to do everything else. But once you learn it, just try to stay with us so I can touch on the things that I think you're going to struggle with a bit, okay? So I have four more problems that I want to talk to you about. And then I also have a couple things that I need to show you with the uh, cool 3D thingy that used to be up in the rafters and now down here. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about example three problems. Number 13. Graph each equation. Use the intercepts and traces. Now, this is where you guys that have used the X and Y intercepts for the past week, it's been helpful to you. It's going to help you out a lot here. And what a trace is. Now remember at the beginning of the lesson we, we said that, you know, define intercept and trace. We talked about coordinate space. Well, we're going to see what an intercept and trace is here. So if you take and go to graph 13, I saw a lot of you actually had already drawn your, your x and y axis in here and z axis. So for those of you who are just sitting around waiting for the class on other problems, you can just you can kind of get these drawn in, okay? You don't always have to label positive, negative, especially if you're dashing, but I'd at least a label, hey, that one's Y, this one's Z. This is the one that will mess you up a lot because you're so used to the one going out that way as being X. over, you know, this one is actually our x. Alright, so we've got our x, we've got our y, we've got our z. Okay. What's up? Can we switch the x and y if it makes it easier for us? No. No? Okay. No. Yeah. Generally the way you see it, you're going to always have z going up, y going out this way, and x coming towards you. And you can, a lot of, how many have dealt with like computer programs where you're doing three dimensional? You can twist it around, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it's really pretty cool stuff. But the way we're going to reference it from our books and stuff, we're going to have it in this, this uh, direction because that's how they have it. Okay, number 13 says find, graph each using the intercepts. So if I'm looking at 13 and I'm finding the intercepts, remember, intercepts just tell us what x, y, and z are when other variables are zero. zero. So if I want to find the x-intercept, I make y and z zero. I get x plus zero plus zero equals three. So x equals three. three. So my x-intercept is three. Okay. So I have an x-intercept of three, and you'd have zero zero, right? So that's your x-intercept. Now, a lot of you won't write out 3, 0, 0 like that. You'll just say, okay, it's at 3. So on my x-axis, I am going to go to 3, and I am going to put a dot. That's where my, my graph is going to cross the x-axis. Okay? My y-intercept is when x and z are 0. So I put 0 in for x. I put 0 in for z. I get a y-intercept of? Three. three. Now, it's not always going to be the same, but in this case it is. The y-intercept is three. So I have that coordinate, zero, three, zero. Okay, so once again, you may not write it out like this every time. You're probably just going to go, hey, the y-intercept's three, and you go to three on the y, and you put a dot. Okay, and then you go to the z-intercept. That's when x and y are both zero and z. And z equals three. three. So my z intercept is, once again, zero, zero, and three. So again, you probably won't always do that, but for now, so that we're seeing it, there we've got it. You now have your intercepts plotted. What you now need to do is what are called traces. And traces just draw lines through your intercepts. 
So from 3 on Z to 3 on X, I'm going to draw a line through that looks like that. I am not just drawing a segment to the points. I'm drawing a line through those. And then from 3 on X to 3 on Y, I'm drawing a line through those. They go on forever. Get those arrows on there. 3 on Z, 3 on Y, I'm drawing a line through them. Get the arrows on there. Those lines that you've drawn are now called traces. Those are called traces. All right. How many are with me so far? Very good. So you have these traces. Now, really what you have, if... Um, let me see if I can get this set. Okay. Um, I like to think of it as a... Uh, you know, if kids are running in the hall, you could just throw it out there as like a, a, a slowing down device. Yes. <laughs> could hurt, so we try not to do that. Okay. But this is actually a three dimensional coordinate plane. Pretty cool. It is pretty cool. All right, let me see. Here's my X. I guess it really doesn't matter. Here's, this would be my X right there. Here's my Y, and here's my Z. Okay? So we've got my X, Y, Z. Now, the, the thing that we've just graphed, that's going through 3 on X, 3 on Y, and 3 on Z. So it's a plane cutting through, going like that. So if you, if you look at it, right, you can kind of see that depending upon which view. Now, if you had a computer, this would be really cool because you could twist it around and see that plane. This plane goes on forever. Okay, it slices through these axes and slices through this one, it just keeps going. So it would go all the way down, it would visit, visit Miss Shrek downstairs, it would go up through the roof, go up to the sun and just visit and hang out for a while. It goes on forever. Okay, it's a plane that's cutting through that. The way we show that plane, the way we show that plane, let me turn this this way. There we go. The way we show that plane is with that triangle right here. This triangle, we shade over the top showing that that plane is lying kind of right in front there. Okay? So notice the arrows. The arrows show that it's going on forever. Alright. How many are with me? Okay. I want you to go to problem 19. So now for some of you that are really struggle, you're going to look and go, um, I, I have to skip all this stuff, like these dots. Well, yeah, just go down to 19 and draw your plane. Okay? We're going to do number 19 as a class there. Okay? So first thing I want you to do before I do it is I want you to find the intercepts, the X, Y, and Z intercepts. Okay, I'm just going to list my intercepts like this now. What's my x-intercept when y and z are 0? Yeah, we plug in 0 right there, so that disappears. Plug in 0 right there, that disappears. So 6x six equals 6, so x is? It's 1. Okay. So you put x-intercept is 1. y-intercept is when x and z are 0. Okay, so we plug in 0 for both of those. They disappear. So we get negative 3y equals 6, and negative 3y equals 6. What does y have to be? Negative 2. Negative 2. And then the z-intercept is when x and y are 0. So z equals 6. Notice that negative sign goes with the y. So z equals 6. So we have our intercepts there. Any questions on finding those three? Okay, we now plot them. Okay, so I've got my cool guy deal here. Kerchow style. There, there, and 
there. X, Y, and Z. -er. One, negative two, and six. How many got it? Okay, questions on it. Okay, I'm going to give you some time right now to do a little work on uh, the graph set for, there you notice I've numbered them. So you have to do 14, 15, 20. And then when you look to the back, you got through 31 there, and then I've got some other dots over there. but. Looks like you have three on the front still and then six on the back. Why don't you work on some of those? When you get to 25 and 28, those are going to be tough. We're going to go through some of those as a class. It's going to look a little different. We'll go about three, four minutes working on as much as you can, and we'll touch on um, 25 and 28. Hey, we're going to look at 28 now. The only reason I saved 25 and 28, I'm sorry, let's look at 25 first. The only reason I saved those for now is because the equations look different, which means our graph's going to look different. Okay? So I realize some of you aren't to those, but you need to pause now, otherwise it's going to get confusing here. That's why we're going through them together. So what's the x-intercept for 25? Okay. It's when y is 0, there's no z, so x equals 8, right? Yeah. Okay, x equals 8. The y-intercept Good, is when x is 0, so negative 4 times y is 8, so that equals negative 2. Okay, so we've got those you need to take and you need to graph onto your coordinate plane. So we find number 25 and we draw our plane. Even though there's no z, we still have that z-axis. got it. We've got an x-intercept of 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Holy moly, I didn't go far enough out. 8. Man, it's way out there. Okay, a y-intercept of negative 2. And we then have a nice line drawn in between. Okay, we draw our trace between those two. There's only one trace in this. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that as I draw this trace, just so it's easier on my eyes, I'm not going to cross over or cross behind that z-axis. If you did, it's not the end of the world or anything. Okay. Now, really what we have, let me uh, once again try to get this set. Okay, so stand with me here. You have, you have a plane that's cutting through x and it's cutting through y. Everyone with me? Sorry, there you go. It's cutting through x and it's cutting through y. Looking like so. So it's parallel to z. It's not cutting through z. So if it doesn't go through z, it doesn't intersect z, then it's parallel to z. 
So the easiest way to kind of go through and graph this is the next thing is to draw these vertical lines going through where it crosses Y and where it crosses X parallel to Z. So try to picture what those lines are going to be like on your paper. Okay? Talk with your groupie about it then. Okay, I heard so, I heard one des description. I think it was I think it was cold, or maybe it wasn't. Someone said it looks like an H. Who said that over that here? Me. Is that you? Lee? Okay, kind of looks like an H. Now the way I'm going to kind of draw that, I I've dashed it on the bottom. That that really doesn't matter all that much. But I'm drawing these lines that are parallel. Okay. All right, you kind of see if you want to dash them, that sometimes helps students. But drawing these lines parallel to Z, and then you have this plane that's running between them. Now, you'll notice that I've tried to keep my, the length of my vertical lines I drew about the same length. And as I'm shading, I'm kind of shading parallel to my trace. It just, it's just an aesthetic thing. It, it kind of is. This, is more aesthetically pleasing when you do that. It makes it a little easier to see. All right, some students I've seen in the past because they're like, well, this x-axis is kind of in front of it. So they like, after they shade, they really go over the x-axis again. They're like, it's real, it's it's in front of that. So the the plane is actually behind it. So they even sometimes bolden that out a bit more just so they can see that the plane's behind it. Just so it's easier on their eyes but notice it doesn't cross the z-axis anywhere all right one last one you have x equaling negative 5 on number 28 that's pretty easy to find the x-intercept it's at negative 5 okay So on this one, it doesn't cross two axes. So we go to negative 5 on x. And from that point, you've got to go with a parallel line to z, but also a parallel line to, to y. OK, kind of like that. And then you're shading goes like so. Okay, the plane is just just kind of hanging out there, poking over the y-axis. So for some people it's really helpful to see the actual image of it. Remember this this is going through and then it pokes through right there. It pokes through and then back here we can't actually see the line anymore. Okay, so let me show you what that looks like here. This is good, and how far do you do you know how far to make it from the z and y axis? I just make sure I don't cross them. But that's what that one looks like, right? So if you're dealing with, oops, x, it's back here, okay? So it kind of looks like, looks like that. Oh, it's hard to see that, you guys, but. It's kind of projecting through like so. So you have your x-axis coming in, hitting it, and then popping out the back. It's parallel to z, and it's parallel to y. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well done today. Good